Hello children, we stopped the first audio of the lesson, the hack driver, where Bill suggests to ask his wife to pack lunch for them, so that he will get some money out of that also. We will continue. I know that Bill's helpfulness to the young fellow from the city was not entirely a matter of brotherly love. I was paying him for his time. In the end, I paid him for six hours, including the lunch hour, at what was then a very high price. So that is that he, the, the narrator also realized that it was not purely brotherly love or selfless love that uh, the hack driver was showering on him. He got money, his money, right, for everything that he suggested for the hack, for waiting jar, the food, lunch hour, lunch. Also, she, uh, he said that you will have to pay just half a dollar, right. So he knew that uh, it is uh, for money also. And uh, he himself says that uh, towards the end, he had to pay what was then a very high price. But he was no more dishonest than I. I charged the whole thing to the firm. So the narrator says that, okay, I gave him money and what did I do? I put it in the name of the firm. So the firm had to pay. But it would have been worth paying him myself to have his presence. His cheerful country wisdom was very refreshing to a country boy like myself who was sick of the city. So he says that I don't mind paying him myself also because his company was such. I was so sick of the city and his cheerful country wisdom was very refreshing for me. As we sat on the hilltop, looking over the pastures and creek which slipped among the trees, he talked of New Malin and painted a picture in words of all the people in it. Pastures is a land covered with grass and creek is a short arm of river, meaning is given. Okay. He noticed everything, but no matter how much he might laugh at people, he also understood and forgave their foolishness. So he says that, oh, it is said, no, he painted a picture in words of all the people in it. So from what he heard, he understood that he noticed everything that happened around him. And he made laugh, he made uh, fun of people, but he also understood and forgave their foolishness. He described the minister's wife who sang the loudest in church when she was most in debt. So he gives us examples of people. Uh, debt, you know, state of owning mo owing money. Uh, he has to, she has to give money to other. She had borrowed and she had to give it back. So that was a condition, but she sang the loudest in the church. He commented on the boys who came back from college in fancy clothes. He told about the lawyer whose wife could never succeed in getting him to put on both a collar and a tie on the same day. That both collar and a tie can refer to that collar as a, uh, as a lawyer, right? Yes, uh, a professional costume and a tie may be what he wears when he goes out for a party and all. So the wife could not succeed in making him do two things, the professional uh, part and the other part uh, the same day. He made them all live. What do you mean by that? He made them all live. The narrator doesn't know any of these people in person, right? But the way he narrated, the way Bill uh, gave him a picture of these people, made them all live in front of him. It was as though the narrator saw them, the narrator uh, met them in person. On that day, I came to know New Malian better than I did the city and love it better. Bill didn't know about colleges and cities, but he had traveled around a lot of the country and had had a lot of jobs. From his adventures, he had brought back a philosophy of simplicity and laughter. He strengthened me. We left that peaceful scene of meadows and woods and resumed our search of Oliver Dutkins. Resumed means continued something after a pause. So they had taken a break to have lunch, right? So after that, they started again their journey in search of Oliver Ludkins. We could not find him. At last, Bill cornered a friend of Ludkins and made him admit what he guessed. Oliver has gone out to his mother's farm three miles north. We drove out the laying plants. So they decided to go to Oliver's mother's house. 
I know Oliver's mother. She is a terror, Bill sighed. I took a trunk out there for her once. And she almost took my skin off because I didn't treat it like a box of eggs. So, he, she, uh, she, uh, he gives uh, the narrator a picture of uh, Oliver Lutkin's mother. That she is a terror. And what he experienced once. When he was to take a trunk out for the... She uh, was so angry that uh, he did not treat it like a box of eggs. She is about 9 feet tall and 4 feet thick and quick as a cat. And she sure can talk. I will bet Oliver heard that somebody is chasing him and he has gone out there to hide behind his mother's skirts. So, Bill tells the narrator, I am sure by this time Oliver has come to know that somebody is chasing him and he has gone to his mother. Well, we will try her. But you would better let me do it, boy. You may be great at literature and law, but you haven't had real training in swearing. Swearing here refers to the bad words or the way uh, Oliver Larkin's mother treats. So, you may be good in law and literature, but maybe you haven't experienced that. So, it's better that I talk to uh, Oliver Larkin's mother than you. We drove into a poor farmyard. We were faced by an enormous and cheerful old woman. My guide bravely went up to her and said, Remember me? I am Bill Magnuson, the carter and hackman. I want to find your son, Oliver. I don't know anything about Oliver and I don't want to, she shouted. Now look here, we have had just about enough nonsense. This young man represents the court in the city and we have a legal right to search all properties for this Oliver Lutkins. Bill made me sound very important and the woman was impressed. So the, the way Bill introduced me that this person is from the court in the city and all, the narrator also felt a bit important and the woman also was impressed. She retired into the kitchen and we followed. She seized an iron from the old-fashioned stove and marched on a shouting, You search all you want to if you don't mind getting burnt first. She shouted and laughed at our frightened retreat. Retreat means withdrawal. We withdrew. Seeing that she laughed. So, you can, if you visualize, you'll understand, right? She said, okay, you want, you can search everywhere first, first, be ready to get burnt. Let's get out of here. She will murder us, Bill whispered. Outside, he said. Did you see her smile? She was laughing at us. I agreed that it was pretty disrespectful treatment. We did, however, search the house. Since it was only one story high, Bill went round it, peering it, peering in at all the windows. We examined the barn and stable. Barn is a large farm a building for storing grains. We were reasonably certain that Lutkins was not there. It was nearly time for me to catch the afternoon train. Bill drove me to the station. On the way to the city, I worried very little over my failure to find Lutkins. I was too busy thinking about Bill Magnuson. Really, I considered returning to New Mullion to practice law if I had found Bill so uh, practice law. If I had found Bill so deep and richly human, might I not grow to love Fritz and Gustav and a hundred other slow-spoken, simple, wise neighbors? I pictured an honest and happy life beyond the strict limits of universities and law firms. I was excited. I had found a treasure. I had discovered a new way of life. So actually, he did not succeed in his uh, purpose, right? He couldn't find uh, Oliver Lutkins to serve the summons. But he was not bothered about it at all. He did not worry about it. All he thought about in his return journey was Bill Magnuson. That one person, if he has impressed me so much, he thinks that how will the other people be here? So why can't I come here and start practicing law here? But if I did not think much about Lutkins, the office did. So when he came back to his office, he said that I did not think much about Lutkins, but my office did. 
I found them all upset. Next morning, the case was coming up in the court and they had to have Lutkins. I was a shameless, shameful, useless fool. That morning, my promising legal career almost came to an end before it had begun. So that was what he faced. It was almost end because he was sent with a purpose very important, but he, was, he did not succeed in that. The chief almost murdered me. He hinted that I might do well at digging ditches. I was ordered back to New Mullion and with me went a man who had worked with Lutkins. I was rather sorry because it would prevent my loafing all over again with Bill. So that shows that he didn't mind going back to New Mullion, right? But he was sad that he sent another person with him who had earlier worked with Lutkins because then he cannot loaf. Loaf means spend time idly. So he thought that, okay, if I go there, I can spend time idly with Bill Magnuson. That will, that will not happen if another person is there, right? So he was sorry. When the train arrived at New Mullion, Bill was on the station platform near his cart. Strangely enough, that old tigress, Lutkin's mother was there, talking and laughing with Bill, not quarreling at, quarreling at all. So f from the train, they could see uh, Bill standing at the station. But something strange was there. That old tigress who was Lutkin's mother, she was talking and laughing with the not in a quarreling mood at all. From the train steps, I pointed Bill out to my companion and said, There is a fine fellow, a real man. I spent the day with him. He helped you to hunt for Oliver Lutkins? Yes, he helped me a lot. He must have. He is Lutkins himself. So look at that. That is the, what should I say, when we say about story writing and we say the, the twist in the story. To the end, the twist happens. The, per, the person who accompanied him says that, oh yes, he must have because he is Lutkins himself. What really hurt me was that when I served the summons, Lutkins and his mother laughed at me as though I were a bright boy of seven. With loving kindness, they begged me to go with them to a neighbor's house for a cup of coffee. I told them about you and they are anxious to look at you, said Lutkins joyfully. They are about the only folks in the town that missed seeing you yesterday. So that is why he called them for a cup of coffee. So uh, that is the uh, fun element in the story, right? All this time it was Lutkins himself who sh uh, showed him around, took him to so many places and things like that. So if you look back, if, now if you look back at the story, you will understand. He was very careful. He, every place he said that, I will go and ask. Uh, you don't ask. You hide behind me, right? Uh, so uh, in other words, what should you understand? The village is also very supportive of Lutkins. Otherwise, when Lutkins himself went and asked them, uh, have you seen Lutkins and all? They also uh, acted uh, accordingly, right? As if he was here one minute ago, two minutes ago, like that. So that shows that they all loved Lutkins. Isn't it? That's what you should understand. Now, why was Lutkins able to do this to this stray, uh, uh, person? Because from the first line, he understood that this person doesn't have an idea of who Lutkins is. The line, I want to find a man named Oliver Lutkins. That line made it clear to Oliver Lutkins that the person who has come has no idea who Lutkins is. And from there he starts his game. Understand? So how, how the presence of mind, his presence of mind, isn't it? Everything. So, under, I think you understood the story. So, uh, it was Lutkins himself who took him around. And fooled him like that. So we, what we should understand is we should be very careful when we deal with strangers. Well, where did the narrator go wrong? First of all, he had no idea about who uh, Lutkins was. Okay, you, he went and asked a person who Lutkins was. That you cannot say it is wrong. But 
the thing is that as we proceed we understand that he blindly believes whatever they say he is full of admiration for the hack driver right from the beginning so he doesn't uh, suspect him at all otherwise you can think why is this person so much interested he says no now it is his duty to help me out so there and all you can think why this person is uh, too uh, keen on helping me and another mistake that he made was he didn't go in and ask he listened to what uh, the person said that i will ask you stay here he said that no i will ask you just come with me you are taking me there i will ask my duty i will do so these things we should also learn we should not trust anybody blindly hope you understood the lesson thank you children